that's OK. Uh, so yeah, so this works on the analytical modeling of isotype junctions and solar cell applications. Uh, so the motivation for this uh, comes from looking at alternative designs for uh, multi-junction solar cells. So if you look at the uh, standard setup for these cells, uh, you're going to have the, sex, the, the, the cells uh, put together in tandem through tunnel junctions. Uh, and you're going to have decreasing uh, band gaps as you go from top to bottom. Uh, but one issue with this setup uh, is they usually have to use very expensive germanium substrates. So an interesting idea that you can consider is to have alternative designs that essentially have the cells grown on uh, silicon-based substrates. Some of the uh, potential uh, configurations that you could have uh, look like this. And so here, SC is just going to be uh, an, some random semiconductor that's relevant for the case, so arbitrary. You could put the tunnel junction in the silicon. You could put the tunnel junction on the semiconductor. Or you could put the, uh, the header tunnel junction connecting the two materials. And so of course, uh, that, th those first three I, said, I showed there were uh, under the assumption you deal with an M substrate, but you could have similar structures on the P substrates. So the main point of this work is that we really we want to understand the IV characteristics of the bolded uh, terms, which are the isotype heterojunctions. And isotype here essentially just means that you're going to have the same type of doping on either on each side of the junction, as opposed to, for example, a P in junction when you have a P and an N. So <clears throat> let me look at the existing analytical models that you find in literature. So the basic idea uh, before uh, you see an equation is that you start with a band diagram that looks like this. In this case, that was done for uh, an n-type heterojunction. And the, the observation is that there would be a discontinuity in the conduction band because the two semiconductors are dissimilar. And you'd have associated barriers on either side here called uh, side one and side two. And then the idea is that because you have a Venn diagram like this, then the dominant uh, mechanism for current transfer is going to be thermionic emission. OK, so if I keep on uh, the assumption that we're dealing with an n-type um, isotope or junction, the expression that you'd find in the literature, so for example in Z, um, which is you know one of the canonical references for semiconductor uh, device physics, uh, looks like this. Um, the main point there is that you have uh, an inverse exponential dependence on the total barrier and a direct exponential dependence on the voltage. And overall, um, these things behave qualitatively a lot like diodes. One issue uh, with this expression is that when you go through the derivation, it, it, it requires the assumption that this parameter alpha, <coughs> which is defined as the uh, essentially, the ratio of the concentration scaled by the ratio of the permitti permittivities is going to demand that that's about one. And that's actually quite limiting, especially for the type of structures that, uh, that we were essentially uh, started with to, to motivate this problem. So what we want to do is generalize this to incorporate any value of alpha. So alpha here is going to be any positive number. And that physically is going to correspond to we being able to vary the doping concentrations on either side as we uh, need. To do that, um, <coughs> I need to talk to you a little bit about the lambert avili function, because ultimately this is going to be the, the crucial tool to perform the, uh, the generalization. So suppose uh, you're given a map f, which is going to map the, uh, a number z to z times e to the z. And we define the lambert avili function as the inverse relation of that map, which what it means is that these two relationships have to be satisfied for all complex numbers. And as you define it in this equation, you're going to see that the, the, there's going to be infinitely many solutions. And then we de the way we deal with this is that we talk about the branches of this lambert avili function. And the idea of the branches is, is nothing really that exotic. You have it in you know, functions like the square root. You have plus or minus. Uh, inverse sine, or you're familiar with the, uh, the, log the extension of the logarithmic to the complex plane is the same idea. Now we're just inverting different type of equations. If you're uh, 
said, if your argument is a real number, then you have at most two real branches. Okay, and then we call them the W0 branch, W negative one branch. And this is how the two branches look like. The uh, solid line is gonna be the principal branch, which is an increasing function defined for x being bigger than negative one over e. The dashed line is a decreasing function, it's the negative one branch, and is defined for x between negative one over e and zero. The key point here is that your real values are going to exist only if x is bigger than negative one over e, and the unique values are going to exist only if x is positive. Okay, so that's what the function's like. Um, now, I don't have time to do all the math and the physics required to fully justify the expression that I'm gonna show you, but if you go through all that, um, the point is that the expression you get is gonna be uh, fairly similar in some ways to the original case, but you have this term here, exponential of minus gamma. Now, this gamma is a function which is piecewise defined in terms of the branches of the lambert W function, uh, dependent on what, what the alpha is. And the, it would have dependencies on the, on the barrier side, the voltage and alpha, through the parameters B and C. And again, alpha is just the ratio of the concentration scaled by the permittivities. So at first, you know, when you plug it all back in, it, it may look like slightly complicated expression, but it has very, very nice properties. So first of all, it's this way to find, but you can prove in a very rigorous mathematical sense that is perfectly continuous in alpha, V, and the other parameters. It's, uh, it contains as a special case the expression that I showed you from Z, so it's perfectly consistent with, with that. And that, of course, is the very minimum that you demand from any generalization. But more interestingly, if you think of alpha much greater than one, you could show that the expression becomes this, which you can rewrite in the second form. And that is exactly the expression that you'd see for the current density from medical, metal semiconductor shock contact. Okay, so, so, so these new expressions actually allow you to interpolate anywhere from the, the original case that, you, that I show you from, from the literature all the way to, to these uh, semiconductor shock contacts. And, and, and actually it's very consistent with this, the physics you should expect from having uh, high levels of alpha because essentially that's when your leftmost semiconductor starts to have higher and higher dopings and the band diagram looks exactly like the band diagram that you would assume for these other contacts. So let me just wrap it up quickly there. So the main point is that we took an expression for current density across isotype heterojunctions that was valid for only one case and we significantly expected that to allow for that parameter alpha to be essentially uh, anything. The generalized model has the original model as a special case. And the practical significance of that is that, of course, now you've significantly uh, expanded on the space of heterojunctions that you can model analytically. And like I just mentioned, for large values of alpha, uh, you see that you recover the metal semiconductor shocky contact uh, current density, and, and that that was actually quite consistent with the expected physics of that case. So one can argue that is also theoretically relevant because it's allowing you to take two different structures that previously are treated separately. If you look at any book, there are essentially different chapters, but now you can wrap them all up in a unified way uh, through, through consistent uh, mathematical uh, description. And I think that's all I have to say. Thanks.